Hello and welcome to Mud Brains TV Do It Yourself. Thanks for your time. This is the follow up to the amazing techniques video where I showed you how you can copy a PVC mask and I walked you through how you can go from this to this. This is the copy. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I go from this to this. I hope you enjoy. Bye bye. Okay, now let me start to talk about how I painted the mask. There will be missteps while I paint the mask, but uh, I think that gives me the opportunity to talk about those missteps and maybe keep you from making the same. Always test spray your can on uh, some material that is not the object that you want to paint. Or if the nozzle is partially clogged, you will get some really nasty paint drops on your object. And yeah, you want to avoid that. With the base color uh, applied to the mask, all the cracks and imperfections of the surface uh, start to come out. If I would have went for a perfect finish of the mask or for a perfect surface of the mask, I would have started to like fill all the cracks and sand them and go over this process uh, over and over again until the surface is perfect. perfect. My first waste of material and time uh, is right here in the beginning. For I used the mate white uh, acrylic color as uh, at the foundation as a base for the ma for the mask, and then I used a um, resin-based uh, glossy varnish over it. I knew that the glossy varnish would yellow everything for most resin-based uh, varnishes or clear coats have the tendency to get yellow, but. Uh, I could have just used the off-white glossy color in the beginning, so I wouldn't have uh, to go through these two steps. So that was just a waste of time and money. So just uh, take a glossy color and uh, just if you're wondering why I didn't just uh, stick with the matte color, I need a shiny surface or a very polished surface to paint it in the way that I'm going to do. You will see later on. Overall, I was quite pleased with the result and it looked even better after I let it dry for 24 hours. For my coloring of the mask, I tried to be as low-tech as possible, even though brushes are not low-tech, they're like uh, standard. But I just used uh, two tubes of acrylic paint, one, one a bit off-white, a very light gray, a black uh, tube of acrylics, a little bit of liquid red, and uh, then just some tools to work with it, brushes and uh, kitchen towels and other clean brushes too. Uh, for, for painting the mask I applied the color in washes and washes uh, just means that you uh, use water to thin down the color and then you're going to apply multiple layers of this thin paint. Uh, just take the paint off, out of the tube and mix it down with a bit of water until it has the right consistency that I want to have. And then I uh, go to the area that I want to be darker and I always overshoot this area a little bit for I will remove the paint from all the areas that I don't want it to be on with all the tools that are at my disposal, like with my thumb, with the kitchen towel, or with another dry brush. And this way I try to get it uh, to be just in the area that I want it. If the paint is uh, freshly laid down, then it is very easy to wipe it off. The longer you wait, uh, the better it will stick to the surface that you're painting on, and the harder it gets. And you can use this to your advantage, or in the beginning you wipe off everything if you uh, move over it with a for example kitchen towel but the longer you wait you will just gradually uh, take it off and this way you can build up gradients between the color and the surface so you can blend between the two and this is why I wanted to have a, a very smooth surface 
like I get from a glossy finish. For the surface has to be non-absorbent. So if the if the color really can uh, penetrate the surface, which it would do on uh, if I had uh, done a matte finish, then I wouldn't be able to really wipe off everything. And yeah, then I wouldn't have been able to wipe off everything. For me, uh, the easiest way that I found to blend the color, uh, so after I laid down a, a thick a patch of color. Uh, when I use a dry brush, the dry brush soaks up enough of the uh, wet paint on there that I'm then able to uh, either blend it out or just to absorb everything into the brush. The only thing uh, there you have to be aware of is uh, that if you soak up the color with a brush, then there's this color inside the brush and if you move it around the surface there will always be a little bit of this color left on the surface and to get rid of these uh, unwanted uh, areas of color or of paint uh, I use a wet uh, kitchen towel or I use a brush that I just dip into clean water and you see me multiple times uh, just uh, using a brush in a very uh, <laughs> back and forth kind of way and that's uh, most of the times when I just try to remove color that is not wanted in that area. Yeah. When I painted the black portions of the mask uh, I realized that to draw clean lines with the brush uh, takes like continuous practice and I haven't practiced it pra <laughs> and I haven't practiced it for a while and that's why my lines uh, were kind of all wobbly. The technique uh, used here with this uh, like applying paint and then wiping it off really helped me for... Yeah, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it on the first try. But with uh, applying, wiping off, applying, wiping off, that helped me to get to a somewhat satisfactory result. Painting the red cheeks and the uh, red lips on the mask initially really gave me a problem. For um, I had a liquid red color that I had to dilute with water to uh, yeah, thin it down a bit that it was not too intense. And I just had to find the right mixture that would stick on the surface of the mask. And then I was using this uh, large uh, brush as you can see here. And then I just dabbed it in place and tried to, uh, with multiple dabbing on the same place, I tried to intensify it and try to blend it out uh, to the outer perimeters of spots. For some strange reason, there was a part on the left side of the cheek um, that just wouldn't accept any color. And I tried it uh, two or three times and then decided just to uh, rub all the color off or to uh, remove all the color. And then I used a very fine grit sanding paper to uh, treat the surface. And after I did that, the surface was more willing uh, to take up the paint that I was dabbing down. One thing that bothered me was that after uh, using this acrylic washes on the mask, all parts uh, that I used the wash on or the acrylics on uh, had a matte surface and the rest of the mask that was untouched by color was still very shiny and I wanted to have it a very uniform coat. So I decided to use a semi-gloss finish on the mask and this time I made sure that I had a non-yellowing coat on there and uh, this acrylic color that I bought uh, especially like points it out like non-yellowing. That is more uh, common on acrylic paints as compared to resin paints. But uh, if you're at whatever kind of art store or if you're buying it online, then it will be advertised as non-yellowing. For I did not want to change the colors anymore 
or this off-white base color was like exactly what I needed. This uh, final clear coat uh, not just uh, gave the whole mask a sheen uh, that is uh, uniform across the whole surface, it for sure also protects the layer of paint that you just put on there. So it made it kind of scratch resistant. And I think that's something that you want if you want to uh, use the mask for yourself. That finished the painting part of the mask. And uh, I was kind of sure that the last part, like the cutting out of all the holes, uh, would be very easy. But I was mistaken. The best way uh, for me to cut out everything that needs to be cut out was to use the original mask as a stencil on top of uh, the newly painted mask and paint through the outlines of the holes. And then I at least had some to like uh, work against. And I used all the tools that I had, like uh, the uh, cardboard knife, uh, I used files, I used normal scissors, but the most effective one uh, was the nail scissors, my little old nail scissors that gave me the most control uh, over these holes. And the round holes uh, in the nostrils and on the side of the mask to uh, where you can put the rubber band through, um, there I just used the round file and got in there and uh, just, yeah, just turned it to like grind away uh, the hole to the diameter that I needed. To be really comfortable with, with this whole cutting exercise, I think I need a few more masks. And yeah, may, maybe a bit of a different technique, but uh, I haven't uh, came up with one yet or come up with one yet. Um, the, this way it worked out nice, but it just took a whole lot of time. And just to give the uh, cutting uh, cutting edges, a bit more of a smooth finish, I used very uh, fine grain sandpaper. To give the holes uh, that I made to the mask, uh, especially here where you uh, put the uh, thing through, uh, I just applied a little bit of, or some dabs of uh, wood glue around the uh, outer edge of them. And I think this way they are safe from ripping. For once the glue dried, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, very, very sturdy. I think that's it. <laughs> I think now that I have painted this mask in this way with uh, washes and everything, I learned quite a lot. And the next time I will use this kind of technique, I will be you know, uh, better prepared for it. For everyone that is doing this for like, ever or <laughs> just regularly they will look at it and oh, oh yeah he's a beginner yes and i am a beginner at doing it with this technique <laughs> if you want to duplicate the original mask like one to one uh, and not just the mask uh, but the paint job too i think you have to use an airbrush the upside to using the brushes is that it, uh, it looks more organic and it just does not seem to be part of this endless stream of masks that are coming off a production line somewhere in the world. Paired with the opacity of the mask so that the light can't shine through it, uh, just gives it a, a more of a weighty feel. Like, yeah, this would actually be much heavier than it is. Stop. Stop. I think I talked enough in this video. You know how much I love the duplication technique. You know how much I love the finished look of the mask. No, not this one, but this one. Thank you for having joined me here. Give yourself the luxury of time and start a project on your own. And maybe you will click in again. Have a good time and bye bye.